Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Collegist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the GOE Collegist. So if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to our channel because we are going to cover each and every topic related to geography. Now in today's session on settlements geography, we are going to look into the functional classification of towns and cities in Indian context. Before in earlier lecture, we have also talked about the evolutions of towns and cities, various concepts and classifications of the urban settlements. So if you have not watched those videos, you can search that on the playlist. It's there as functional classification and classification of urban areas. So now in today's session, we are going to look into the functional classification of Indian towns and cities, especially the work of Ashok Mitra. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about the functional classification of Indian cities. Now before we go ahead into the classification itself, let's understand few important things here. So urban geographers who are concerned with looking into the urban aspects, their development, evolution, classification, they applied number of techniques to classify urban places in the world as well as in Indian context. Now here the idea is that how did they classify? So the basis of their function was the most important classification always talked in urban geography, right? So most of the classifications have utilized occupational data provided by census of India in Indian context. So occupational data gives us the data of main workers, marginal workers and several others. So then we look into the occupational structure and accordingly classify that if the workers are more engaged in primary activities, it's a rural area. If it is secondary and tertiary and quinary activities, it's urban area, right? So services basis, work basis, occupation basis becomes one of the major area for data and its analysis in terms of functional classification of towns and cities. So in India, the problem of classifying these urban centers centers was not an easy task. It was very important to understand that there are several reasons because of which Indian classification is tough. It's not that easy. So let's look into these. The first thing is that number of towns in India is too large to handle. On some viable grounds, if you observe, the size of towns has a wide span ranging between 5,000 to 10 million. So that's a huge range that we say. So in classification also, we need to have number of categories. So that's one problem. Apart from that, the second problem is that towns of India have a long historical background and they have been under various regimes dating back thousands of years. Right. So what happens? The evolutionary process, the developmental process are not coherent. They are not similar, not they have a common inception. So that is another problem. And then the third problem is that the data about the functions and economy of Indian cities have not yet been standardized. It means what? There is no standard list or standard chart or standard number of variables. So because of this, what happens? A complexity. Every author has a different standpoint, viewpoint. That's what we look into. So what happens here? The absence of a suitable urban agency to deal with this standardization is still missing. A lot of work and a lot of research is going on in many areas, but still there is no single national data center for giving us the data of urbanization per se or the classification of Indian cities in this particular way. So different scholars have given their own viewpoints using various methods, empirical analysis, statistical analysis. So what you observe here under these circumstances, classifications and categorization of urban places or you say towns and cities in India are different from one state to the other state one author to the other author and this is the complexity right so now let's look into further how it all started post independent era so Amrit Lal 1959 was the first person who made an attempt to classify these urban centers urban areas and he used this statistical method called locational quotient LQ method. So this is a statistical method and you can separately learn it. We'll also talk about this when we do statistical methods in geography lectures in details. So locational quotient analysis was applied to the classification to determine the functional classification of class one cities in India, the biggest cities in India. 
right and then all the class 1 cities of india except few were supposed to be multifunctional multidimensional and diverse functions so this is what amrit lal classification gave an inference then came the next one that is kazi ahmed's classification of 1965 and 1971 where he used 62 variables look at the number of variables it's a huge number of variables and they classified it into 102 indian cities on the basis of their functions so now if you observe that these two major initiatives that were taken were very vast and were of a kind so it is variation between two authors and then the most accepted one and the most famous is definitely ashok mitra's classification of 1971 and 73 and it used the seven categories of workers that's a highlight here as variables grouped into three major functional types so remember seven categories of workers and three categories of the major themes or you can say major attributes under which manufacturing trade transport and services so 1 2 3 these were the three major groups or three major pillars under which all the towns were classified by ashok mitra so what you observe the most common functional classification of indian cities if you have to learn the 10 categories are there. there for a generalized way of looking into it and then we look into the ashok mitra's classification after this basic general classification so the first category is administrative towns in india so if you observe there are certain towns and cities which are known by its administrative functions so for example new delhi mumbai kolkata chennai bangalore hyderabad lucknow jaipur patna most of them if you observe are the capital cities of their own states isn't it then what you observe is defense towns famously for the dominant defense functions security functions national security defense all those things so if you observe they are ambala halwara jalandhar jamnagar jodhpur several other if you observe that's a huge list here then if you observe in india the third kind of towns and cities are the cultural towns and cities now remember cultural function religious function socio economic functions these are some of the functions which we categorize so when we say cultural cities it essentially means that they have certain kind of cultures for which they are known alabad amritsar now alabad is known as prayagraj and bodhgaya dharmshala gangotri three haridwar and so many others in the list isn't it they are known for particular cultures they are known for particular worshiping sites religious connotations and several other stories around it isn't it then what you observe is the fourth one which is collection centers if you observe mining towns fishing ports lumbering centers these are economically highlighted towns and cities so we have several examples if you observe the list here right from the north to south so gujarat to uttarakhand to machlipatnam to so many places. this is kadalore and several others and then what we have is the production center so obviously which is known for production of particular goods right so bhilai bhadravati bukaro coimbatore dhanbad durgapur these are all iron and steel cities if you observe they are known for production of iron and steel then further if you observe we have transfer and distribution centers of these goods and services so again they are important commercial centers market towns mumbai kolkata chennai ahmedabad gwalior indore and several others right then what we have is resort or recreational centers or towns so they are specially known for their recreational facilities so for example bageshwar dehradun dalhousie darjeeling dharmshala gulmarg kulu manali mount abu nainital and pahalgam panchmadi uti ranikhet several of these resort towns where people go to spend quality time be with nature do recreational activities so these are known for that then what is the next category here residential towns known for the residential buildings and complexes and societies so panchkula near chandigarh and several others if you observe are known for that so nearby delhi if you see rohini indirapuram shravasti vihar and several others you have so many examples and new townships are coming isn't it then what you observe is seaports the towns famous for their seaports so of course you know diamond harbor haldia kandla kochi new mangalore new tuticory and then you have okla and paradip several of these are known for their seaports or for their ports isn't it then what you have is the 10th category which is cities with diverse function they are not known for any single function but variety of function diversity of function so they are usually the bigger cities like mumbai delhi kolkata chennai visakhapatnam jaipur alabad varanasi multi dimensional functions 
isn't it so this is a general classification of the 10 categories of indian towns and cities now let's look into the specific one and the famous one is ashok mitra's classification this great scholar gentleman here ashok mitra so he's popularly known as father of indian census and he attempted a comprehensive classification of all Indian cities. Very famous, isn't it? So, if you observe Ashok Mitra's classification is based on categories of workers classification of the census data 1961 and 1971, right? And in 1991, Another effort was made to classify all urban places in terms of their functional character with slight modification, of course, by adjusting the industrial categories into five broad economic sectors, right? So this great gentleman Ashok Mitra published a lot of work. He was a great scholar. So let's look into some of his work. Census reports of West Bengal in India. Then we have district gazetteers of West Bengal, India's population, aspects of quality and control. Then Translated Tagore's Chaturanga Sahitya Academy. He was a member of Sahitya Kala Academy as well. Then author of Paschim Europar Chitrakala and four painters, very famous Char Chitrakar in Hindi. So he was a great scholar, not just a Registrar General of Census of India, but otherwise also he was a great scholar. So he contributed a lot. And let's look into Ashok Mitra's classification. So the first category you will see is the primary activity. And here cultivators, agricultural laborers, livestock, forestry, fishing, hunting, plantations, orchards and several other activities and mining and quarry. If you observe, this is primary activity, the first category. Then further, if you observe is the industry, that is the second one under which you have manufacturing, processing, servicing and repairs in household and manufacturing, processing, servicing, repairs other than household. The next one is the construction workers, right? So if you go here, one, two, three, four, five, six, sixth one, right? Under industry. And then if you observe the third major pillar is your trade, under which you have trade and commerce as seventh and transport, that is transport, storage and communication as eighth and services simply, that is other services as ninth, which you can say the other logistical services and several others. So these are the different categories if you observe of the workers accordingly he classified now to learn this classification in more interesting way there is a triangle of Ashok Mitra which we need to understand so he grouped seven industrial categories of workers into three broad groups if you observe manufacturing town trade and transport town and service town now using the triangular method this triangle that is the equilateral triangle method he tried to identify the advantage or you can see the specialization so here on one axis you will find trade and transport one axis is services one is manufacturing and then if you observe what does it talk about degree of specialization of these towns and cities which fall close to these axis or lines so what you observe there is a in center which has been plotted here and concentric rings have been plotted around the in center right this is what we look now here is zero value and here is 100 value and this line if you observe here from b to e represents trade and transport lines it means if the cities or towns are falling close to these lines they will have specialization in what category trade and town so this three and two will be specialist in trade and transport as it is close to 100 value here Similarly, here is manufacturing zero and here is hundred. So fourth and fifth, which is lying close to this right here on this line A and D will be specialized in which one? It will be specialized in manufacturing. And similarly, here is zero for C and F is here hundred. So towns lying close to this is six and one. They will be specialized in what? Services. Right. So in this way, in simple way, you can understand the triangular method where this particular triangle, which is equilateral triangle and in center method was given to understand this specialization. If you observe carefully and the value of the three groups are then plotted and a point for each town within the triangles perpendicular was located where you see each town is located, which category it is falling into and the circles from the in center point 33 and one by three right so each of these categories if you observe this particular one this particular one and this particular one this is all 33 and half right 
and this is what we look into and further proportionate circles if you observe 40 45 and 50 values have been drawn here so what you understand from this this is basically talking about this specialization of a town in particular category which can be identified using this triangle method so this is basically application of the triangle or you can say mathematical and statistical methods to classify them now further the classification of 2528 towns were done by Ashok Mitra and out of which 736 were agricultural and then further if you observe out of 1792 that is 25 to 8 minus 736 rest were non-agricultural towns it means they were based on the workers who were engaged in non-agricultural activities so 655 were manufacturing 708 as trade and transport towns and 429 as service towns so Ashok Mitra's classification on a whole brings the major categories of cities with their specialization and we know what is the major category here three broad categories of manufacturing towns trading towns and service towns this is how the broad classification of Indian towns and cities was done by Ashok Mitra's work further if you observe in 1981 another classification by Shekhar Mukherjee using the techniques and modification of Ashok Mitra was again done so together with this classification it worked out the hierarchy of towns based on their functions now remember we talked about hierarchy of settlements so hierarchy according to their functions as well so as you go top the ladder what happens with towns their specialization is more as well as they have diverse function right so as you go bottom in the ladder number of towns are more but they are not specialist so that is one thing that was talked in Mukherjee's work later on and the analysis was done using statistical tools like factor analysis, distance analysis, hierarchical cluster analysis and several others. So these are the techniques we can say statistical tools and techniques which we need to learn separately to understand how it is implemented in the study of urban settlement systems. So this is about the urban classification, this is about the classification of towns and cities based on their functions in Indian context. So now when we have looked into the various aspects of the functional classification of Indian towns and cities in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on different other aspects of settlement geography. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching and learning, keep sharing the videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So all the best wishes, take care.